yeah, and this is a really cool album. Like I mentioned, uh, they're gonna switch it up a little bit. They they hear they hear the backlash. <laughs> they hear people saying this is Zeppelin 2.0 or Zeppelin knockoffs, whatever. And they're still gonna do it. That's what they do. But they're gonna add in a lot more of that prog rock stuff too. Um, so yeah, this is a really cool one. And as we mentioned already, um, or as a, one of us mentioned, um, they went down to Chattanooga to write a lot of these songs. So they just go down, they get this cabin in the middle of the woods, um, they get really, really drunk a few nights, and <laughs> just start writing. Um, and it sounds to me like, like I don't I don't know anything about the, the drug use of this band, but I would be shocked to find out none of them take hallucinogens <laughs> to, to inspire their writing. It would truly shock me. <coughs> Bro, 100%. The, the, yeah, they, there's no way. There's, there's no way. There's no fucking way. Uh, real quick, how funny would it be if they just released like a single as a troll, where it was just like pure like just anything you'd hear like on a pop radio station, like just a complete like pop. <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious if they like released that and, like yeah, like on like you know the first week of April or something? They're like, yeah, this is our new song or whatever, and, and <laughs> just to have everyone just be like, this is trash, like you guys sold out, like this is terrible, and they're like, oh, I thought this is what you wanted from us, or even better, like cover like a Yardbirds song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be funny too oh brother but uh yeah one of the quotes here they did another um interview and it, they're kind of talking about the idea of this album uh and sam kiska the he's kind of the bassist kind of the like keyboardist he says th- they had this idea um it kind of dives into roots and beliefs i think it asks fairly large questions what are we doing to ourselves what are we doing to our environment what are we doing to each other why must there be hate why must there be evil and greed? I think it asks the simple question of why can't we all be one? We're all people. We all look up to the sky, breathing the same air. We come from the same place. And that's very much the vibe of this whole album. Um, there's a few tracks that are a little bit darker, a little bit angrier in that in that tone. And there's others that are just like, wow, this world is amazing. Being one is amazing. Um, and, and it's a fantastic mix of songs on this track or on this whole album. I, I read that quote. I'm I'm glad that you saved it because I, I read it and I was like, this is really good, but it's also really long. Uh, yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm glad you got it. <laughs> so this album opens with Asia Man, which is a great way to open out the album, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so, too. And this is a little bit more on the positive side of things. Um, mid-tempo, thick and a little bit heavier than usual, just because uh, they kind of open up in this weird slow section. Um, uh-huh. And everything's tuned down a little bit, but then it breaks into a, kind of a typical song. Um Power chords, power yell from Josh everywhere, like a lot of them on this song. Um, the verses have these softer sections. The chorus kicks it up to 11, and then back, and then up. Um, the keyboard helps really create the vibe in this track, though, for me. Gives you really thinks this really thoughtful, contemplative vibe. Um, well, the, the lyrics are a bit more upbeat and positive. That's more the vibe is the contemplative vibe. Yeah, I thought the vocals really stood out on this track, some of the lyrics. And as we came into the clear to find ourselves where we are here, who is the wiser to help us steer? And we will know when the end is near. And then I'd also noted that, so what you had pointed out earlier when they were in, uh, they spent that week in nature, like yeah. to, to get ideas and everything. Uh, when they were in the cabin and they had some acoustic instruments, they started working on this song and they were kind of playing around with that. And then uh, Josh started singing in the cabin with the acoustic instruments going, and they decided this would be, like, the opener for the album. Yeah, and I'll save that thought for later. Um, I, I'm really – I got some thoughts I need to save till the end, but it's a great way to open this album. For sure, and I, I do have one little tidbit. In this song, it contains the, li- the line, Wonderlands of Ice and Snow, which is obviously a hat tip to immigrant song <laughs> Led Zeppelin. Yeah, I, th- I think they said something along those lines. Oh, they, they asked him about it. They were like, ah, it's a little bit of a tip of the cap. Josh said, in some ways, it was a bit of a, a, bit of a wink. In some ways, it acts as a middle finger, too. <laughs> yeah, and they do something like that on the next album, too, which I'll touch on when we get there. But it's funny. It is funny on what we talked about where, like, the people who – bitch about them sounding like zeppelin for them to very uh blatantly do that yeah (laughs) it's funny to add that in but it's a really really cool opener for this album yeah the next song is the cold wind uh good solid track my only note on this was (laughs) zeppelin yep that's my first note on this track super bluesy super (laughs) zeppelin um but yeah mid-high tempo mid-energy mid-high energy kind of these like poppy fun chords mixed in with uh like deeper licks 
usually it's the other way around in rock songs, I feel like, where it's the heavy chords mixed in with either like these clean quick licks, especially when you're thinking of Paige, right? It's clean quick licks kind of popped in. This is the other way. I feel like this is mostly a fun poppy chords mixed in with deeper licks, mm, okay. which is kind of interesting to me. Um, Josh is doing his best to sound like Robert Plant on this song. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. It is just so Robert Planty. Uh, it's it's wild. Yeah, that like I said, my only track. notes were Zeppelin and, and Robert Plant. <laughs> it's still a good track. <laughs> it's a good. It's not the best song on the album by a long shot, but it's a good song. And really, as I was listening through, there might be one song I don't like through their whole catalog, which is wild. I think there's, uh, for me, it's probably like five or less. It's uh, Actually, I, I take that back. There's songs that I might not have saved, but I don't necessarily dislike That's them. That's what I'm saying. There's, not a s- there's, there's maybe one song I don't like. Okay. Yeah, I, I can one. think of maybe one or two. Yeah, not not many. And I'm still debating it because it's on the fourth album, so I, I've only listened twice. Yeah, you got to gotta give it some more. I need a couple more listens. So next track is When the Curtain Falls. Kind of, in my opinion, this is a good track, uh, kind of cheesy. Yeah, and Alex has kind of the same opinion. I talked to him a lot this week about Greta. And, okay. Uh, he had kind of the same opinion about it. He had even sent me his top ten songs. And when I didn't see this on there, I kind of was like, oh. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, and this is very much, it's, it's Zeppelin-ish. Um, not Zeppelin to the ten, you know, the highest degree, but it's that hard rock kind of bluesy feel to it. Thick chords mixed in with these clean licks, more of what I was talking about, the opposite on the last song. Um, very Jimmy Page-esque on guitar. Very, very Jimmy Page-esque. Mid-high tempo, kind of high energy here. Josh hits some of the most wild yells in the entire catalog on this song, which is a high bar to clear, uh, but he does it. There's a rip-roaring solo at the end of the song. Fucking kicks ass. I love it. It's maybe my favorite solo in their entire catalog. I love this song. Yeah, so I'd save this song because the music's really good. The lyrics, though, for me, it's just cheesy. It's it's a story about a, a young star struggling in the limelight, and when the curtain falls, they go back to like the fake shallowness of Hollywood. Ah, okay, so, okay. Some of the lyrics, camera, lights, and action. Yeah, the words you know so well. You're in and out of fashion in Hollywood of hell. So I, I guess maybe just not relatable for me. Yeah, he does something kind of weird with his voice, too, there, where he, like, he's like almost a little theatrical with his voice on the verses. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? I don't know quite how to put it. It's not like his normal singing. It's a little bit more like jaunty. Right, right, right. Um, it's interesting, but it's just different. Anyways, uh, I can see where people might not love this song, but on the guitar alone, this is one of my favorite tracks. Yeah. The next track is one of my favorites, Watching Over. Yeah, this is a really cool, interesting track, too. This is more of that hippie prog rock stuff I was talking about. Um, softer, trippy vibe on the cor- or on the verse with these like heavy strong chorus choruses um it's like they got these like clean singing at the beginning of the chorus and then to the point where he's like angry yelling by the end of the chorus and then smooth out of it Mm -hmm. um there's cool instrumentals kind of sections throughout i got cream vibes here again like cream clapton vibes here okay um this is one of the other songs about like taking care of the planet yeah so to your point of again him being a little bit angry this the song gave me uh climate change and then I, there's hints of religion, but mo- more focus on the climate change, in my opinion. Uh, some of the lyrics, I wonder when we'll realize this is what we got left, and it's our demise with the water rising and the air so thin, still the children smiling, can we see no sin? Yeah, just a, it's a call to action. It's a, a realization that, what I don't, mean, don't want to make political points here, this isn't a politics podcast, but <laughs> it's a an observation of where we're at and him saying, fuck off we gotta do we gotta do something to change right next up is lover comma lever l-e-a-v-e-r yeah it's an interesting track to me um because they do a little bit of like chanting in the chorus um and he, he gets into a little bit more of this as we go through the catalog but uh this got this like thick bluesy chords throughout a little bit more choppy i would say than usual um josh yelling at the mic for almost the entire song uh this chorus does rock yeah no doubt. like it is choppy but when he hits those notes and i'm not even gonna try right now given my <laughs> state of affairs but when he hits those notes it's bone chilling he kills it kind of mid-high tempo really 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 good deep cut go ahead if you got anything else but well I, uh, yeah i want to skip ahead to the end 
Oh, okay, I, I was going to say, you forgot to mention the epic guitar solo, but I assume that's what you're alluding to now. Yeah, he's got a really cool guitar solo. Uh, is it on the original? I don't think it's on the original. So No? Yeah, so, maybe on the original. Well, I don't even want to call it the original, but there's a there's a longer version at the end of this album. Lover, Lever, and then they parentheses, Taker, Believer. There is a sick guitar solo on that version. Okay, maybe that's what I noted it for. Yeah, and so that version is like six minutes long as opposed to the first one being about three minutes long. And there is a wild solo on that song. The instrumental section for the last like two and a half, three minutes is kick ass. It shreds. Yeah, I Abs- love it. Absolutely shreds. I fucking love this. The, the second version of the song, Take Her Believer, awesome. Yeah, and s- s- I'll just do a quick uh, stanza here. She's my heart's desire. She's an angel straight from hell. Draws me to the deep in the darkness way below. It's my heart she'll keep. Cool song. Um, yeah, really, really good deep cut. Yeah. Next up is You're the One. So this is probably one of their most poppy tracks. It's also catchy as hell. Yeah, this chorus is so catchy. It's sweet, sweet singing from Kiska. And this is the other thing I was talking about where he does that like high pitch, like almost y- yodely yell. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a strummy acoustic ballad, just so sweet with it. The, even though the, like the guitar is sweet, he throws in these like it's acoustic like strummy guitar, but he mixes in these electric licks that are just so I I can't think of a better word than sweet. Um, the keyboard is prominent throughout this song, which again I think sets a tone, but also at points really elevates Josh's voice. Um, kind of a mid slow tempo, which is a little different for them. This is their first let's call it a ballad. Yeah, definitely um, a ballad. But again, just a really really cool track, and he. Even on a ballad, he lets out some great yells here, too. Yeah, some of the lyrics. You're the one I want. You're the one I need. Baby, if I was your king, you would be my queen. You're the rock in my role <laughs> for my soul. You're not okay. You're not picking up on that? I'm doing the yeah, John yeah, Party. Yeah, I was going to say, hold party. on, that's a John Party song. <laughs> Fuck. No, the lyrics, you're the one I want, you're the one I need, you're the one I had, so come on back to me. But I saw those first two lines, and I was like, oh, I think I can slip in some John Party here. You almost got me. I heard it. I was like, no way. See if, see if Joe catches on <laughs> <laughs> you didn't let me stew long enough <laughs> i know i was i was uh, uh it was good though about to i was cracking myself up it's when i <laughs> my poker face is not there uh next up is the new day the new day kind of another acoustic track mid-high tempo mid-high energy um breaks in a little electric guitar later on uh, kind of simple uh nicey solo at the end um he does a really good – Josh does a great job on the mic here, but he doesn't do so much yelling. This is him more in his, like, mid to mid-high level. He doesn't really yell. Yeah. And he never gets below a mid-level. Let's just say that. There's never – there's no songs where he gets below a mid-level. Um, he doesn't, like – and that's a great way of, like, keeping it in tune with the music, I'll say. Because there's a lot of songs where he overpowers the music, which yeah. is fine. They do a great job of it. But this just does a really good job of keeping in like even in level with the music because the music's a little bit softer here. Yeah, the lyrically for me, it I noted that the lyrics sound fake deep is what I'll call it. Some yeah. of the lyrics: love isn't greed; it's a need that goes unspoken. Love doesn't leave when you fade away. Pain isn't vain if it make means your heart's been broken. Pain is the same as it means to heal. I don't mean to be a hater. It's just uh, no. This sounds like it's like a maybe a poem, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of. Uh I don't know how to put it, but I, I get what you're saying for sure. It's a little bit cheesy. Yeah, still still a decent song, though. Yeah, for sure. No problem with it. Uh, the next song was probably my least favorite off the album. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting, getting the evil eyes here. <sighs> Mountain of the Sun. You didn't like this song. I fucking love this song. Yeah? Love it, love it, love it. Tell me about it. Mid-tempo, kind of upbeat, solid hard rock track. Uh Great yells and the yodeling from Josh here. The solo on this track just it like does a great job of echoing the the beat of the song throughout and like adding on to it a little bit. Um, really cool like stripped section at the end where it's just the drums and Josh singing and then he rips one at the end of that like strip section. Um, breaks into this final chorus. Great job of bringing it up and down in terms of energy. Like we talked about this with Foo Fighters and we brought it up a million times. But they do a great job bringing you up, down, up, mm. down, like uh, that square wave uh, vibe to it. This song is a full roller coaster. Maybe my favorite deep cut. I love mm. it. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I don't dislike it. I just, uh, 
compared to the rest of the sound yeah. of the album, I guess it totally I, I, I wasn't wasn't for me, I guess. Got but it. Uh, I do like the next song, Brave New World. Uh, the name, obviously, coming from the book from Aldous Huxley. Aldous Huxley. Yeah. Yeah, and this is maybe the one that I would say. So we're, we're going to flip-flop here because this is the only one I put down. It's oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, That's funny. So this is probably my least favorite on this album. Um, mid-tempo, kind of progressive vibe to it. Chunky, deliberate chords with, like, heavy licks mixed in. Heavy drums. Josh Angry again here. The chorus is maybe not my favorite here. Just something off about it. Yeah. So, I mean, the song takes inspiration from Brave New World. Uh, that's why they titled it. Right, take, right. Take one look at your skies and in the darkness realize, kill fear, the power of lies, for we will not be hypnotized. Right. And that's kind of the vibe of the whole book. Is The whole book is about these people who take drugs to, like, make them just happy and complacent. Soma. Soma. And uh, <laughs> I wanted to try some Soma after reading that book. <laughs> I want to sit down and like eat some soma and like listen to this album. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, uh, I, you know what's funny? I just read that book a couple of months ago. It's a, it was it was interesting. I like I there was a point in the book where like I put it down for a couple of weeks. And I was like, what is this? And then like when I finished it, I was like, oh, that was actually really good. Yeah, it's got a, a good twist at the ending. It's not. It's a good book. I'm not gonna do- dog it in terms of like uh, uh, dystopian future books. Not in my top. Three or it's four. got nothing on 1984. No, it it 1984 puts it to shame. Slaughterhouse Five. Well, that's not nearly the same thing, but like I can think of a couple others that are just I, I like a lot better. Um, but it's still a good book. Yeah. Um, they got this like buzzy, obfuscated solo at the end of it. Again, very 60s, 70s, like hard rock, um, glam rock kind of thing. But uh, whatever. Yeah. Next up. This is actually the last al- or last song on the album here. Sorry, what was that? This next song is the last song on the album. Oh, yes. So, Anthem. So, the lyrics for this song are actually based on a poem that Josh wrote. And Jake told uh, M Live that the song embodies what the album meant to us. It's very topical and current, making the observation that the world is only what the world is made of, which was part of the quote that you read earlier. Right. And, uh, yeah. It just kind of dives into roots and beliefs. It's a cool way to close this album, too. Like, I feel like you've gone through the gamut of emotions listening through this whole album. And this is a, like, solid, just kind of easy way out of it. They, it's a strummy, like, acoustic kind of ballad. Lower energy, um, but, like, mid-energy on the vocals. Again, he doesn't get below that. They take out the drum kit and replace them with hand drums here. Mm. Again, you hear those hollow, like, thick hand drums. Okay. Um, this gives me like, you've already mentioned it, but it's got like unity and harmony written all over yeah. the song. Just the world is one. Yeah. Be, be a part of the world. And Josh is doing this like softer singing and some of the lyrics that go along with that. And every glow in the twilight knows that the world is only what the world is made of. Just you and me can agree to disagree that the world is only what the world is made of. Yeah. It's a really nice track and a really nice way to end this album. Yeah, well, well thought out, the the track placement, the opener, the closer, well thought out. A hundred percent. They didn't. This is a vast improvement on the first one, even. This oh, in terms of song structure and placement yeah, and everything. Yeah, I think the double EP. It's good, but it doesn't really have a cohesive vibe to it. It's right, just, right. They're just songs on a track list. This album, top to bottom, is uh, really well thought out, top to bottom. Yeah, agreed. And then the last track, or not last track, but uh, the bonus, we'd already kind of talked about it, the lover, lever, and then now in parentheses, taker, believer, like you had already mentioned. Uh, they add that epic guitar solo, an extra two minutes, two and a half minutes of instrumental work. Uh, really good stuff. Yeah, good track. I prefer that to the original. Likewise. 